okay. alive in three, two, two, one. Oh, look, the oven got ready at the same time. Cooking with Debbie and friends. I lost my phone. It's over here. <laughs> Cooking with Debbie and friends. We'll make some good food, talk about marriage and parenting too. Self-care and budgeting, that's a massive piece for life, yeah. Cooking with Debbie and friends. Hi, everybody! Oh, wait for your sweeping arms. <laughs> oh. What happened to that part? Hi, everybody! Welcome to Cooking with Debbie and Friends. Cooking with Debbie and Friends is a chat show we do right here in our kitchen together as a married couple. This is my husband, Travis, who is the producer, the sous chef, the uh, ideal idea bouncer offer. Stop what it. do you think of this? Stop what do you think of more. that? And then he tells me, shuddy, shh, talk too much. <laughs> It's, it's Sunday morning. I'm trying to have some coffee. This has been a week where we've been in quarantine too much. We haven't so. finished the intro. Okay. Okay. So Chat hello show everyone. Right here in our kitchen. That's right. Uh, we stream out every Sunday at 12 noon to Facebook and YouTube. So if you're on one of those platforms, please, please click that like button and click share. And if you get a chance, go over to the YouTube channel. That... Um, Subscribe there as well because the more people we get liking and sharing, the better the algorithms will find our show and stream it out to you guys so more people can find us. And if you go to those platforms, please hit the share button or the like button so that you can share this show with others. And uh, considering this is Super Bowl Sunday and we can't go out to Super Bowl parties, you can kind of pre-game right here with us. We would sure. love that. Yeah. yeah. So Why uh, do we stream to those channels? We stream to those channels so that you have lots of opportunities to see the show on whatever kind of channel you want. You can throw it up on your big television screen and watch. We have a couple people that do that. And we do it so that you can chat with each other and you can connect and even meet new friends. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, please comment in the, in the uh, comment section below. Let us know that you're there. And we want to say hello to you. The first one, of course. Hello, my dad. You're in there. And Pilar. Our Pilar, we hope you're feeling better, Pilar. And then uh, there's uh, uh, Fabian and Scott. Mm -hmm. And it kills me because Fabian's one of my best friends. And he's coming out here next week to Hacienda Heights, which is a skip hop and a jump away. Yeah, can't you socially I don't know. I don't know if hello? that would he would feel safe. You know, it's just such a weird time right now. Yeah. So Fabian and um, Scott are here, as is Richard Connemacher, and I hope... Uh, we see some other people there, uh, the numbers in in the um, lower left corner, so we know you're there. Please just, just say, say hello. Just say hi, <laughs> or, or put a little picture of a football. We won't call you out. Yeah. Because we were doing that, and then I think it was... Was it Audrey who said, shh, I'm at work? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was back in the yeah. so, quarantine times. Hey, Suzanne. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you, uh, you know, you don't want to say hi, just put a little shh, but we know that you're there. Hi, Suzanne. We hope you're feeling better, too. Boy, it's just crazy with some people and their health because they don't know if they have COVID. So anything just like a sinus infection or a cold or even just being... Um, or if onions make you cough all night. Or onions make you cough all night. There's a story. Anyway, happy Super Bowl Sunday. Is it Super Bowl Sunday? We are not We are not um, football fans. <laughs> I don't we, really care for hockey. We don't care for... <laughs> we really don't watch a lot of sports. We are very much a musical family. And um, we love old movies. And so our... our um, I grew up in in a in a place where the music uh, program at school was very strong. I was a trumpet player all the way through school, and so I was playing in the band when the football players were on. And also, I was very very skinny, little guy. I would have been crushed on the field. So Hi. I never wanted to play sports. I did run track, but not football or basketball. Or Who else is here? Diana Eaglesons. Hi, we are here. The Eaglesons. Hello, Mrs. Clary. So nice to see you, Mrs. Clary. She lived across the street from us, and she was so sweet and always opened her house to neighbor kids to come and play. I like her name. Isn't it beautiful? Yomar. Yomar. Um, and then there's Loretta Roar Bowen. Hello, Loretta. We hope that you're watching Hi, with some family. As always, we're thinking about you because Loretta is kind of new to cooking. 
And I know a lot of you are because maybe you were in a position where you worked outside of the house. Now you find yourself inside of the house prepping all your food. Um, hi, Linda from Texas, all the way from Texas. Hi, Carol. Rhea says hi. She's making pure... Uh, Pyrogies. Pierogies, pierogies. What's a pierogi? It's a, it, it, Tell me in the comments so that I don't get it wrong, but I believe it's a sandwich, and I or like a like an empanada. I don't know. Can you please okay. let me know? Carol, hiking in. Hi, so glad to have you here. Thank you for coming on. Scott uh, Hale Gomez says, in this house, it's happy feed your face and have a cocktail day. Oh, that's what it should be. Linda, though, too. Linda from, hello from Texas, Linda Holmes. Yes, hi. More I think I did say. Texas. Yeah. Did you? I did. I, I don't know. Because I've been following her on Facebook. She's had a lot twice, of celebrations. Then. Yeah. Um, hi, Debbie Grow. Happy Sunday. My plans change so she's here. All right. And so I'm not a football fan, but I do have a connection to the Super Bowl. And the only shirt I had with, like, has my name on the back, Gutierrez. And it was from a festival I did in Las Vegas about a year ago, January. And it was for... Um, Laughed Out Loud, the Queer Comedy Festival. So it's the closest thing I had that was football-y. Yeah. So I wore it. And this is my football shirt. <laughs> but I do have a um, Super Bowl story. So a million years ago, when I was in my 20s, I taught at Bishop Vermont High School. I was a high school English and speech teacher. And speech was kind of a new subject that they had added to the... Um, curriculum and so I designed a speech class now I had to fill it so I had to convince uh, some of the sophomores I had when they were seniors to come back and take the class and Eric B enemy who is a coach over at um, on the Chiefs he is a, I remember him as a darling boy and he said ah oh, I'm never gonna need speech why would I need speech and I said Eric when you're a big football star and they come to you with a microphone and a camera you need to be able to speak you know just from the heart and instantaneously and be able to um, improvise a wonderful speech so that you don't come off looking you know like a big dumb jock and so he took the class you told them that <laughs> yeah yeah you know because i think they thought oh we're gonna go to speech and get an easy a but, you know, I made them work for their grades. And um, and so Eric said, yeah, I'll take the speech class. And he did pretty good. He did pretty good. It was funny because I had a lot of football players. So when we came to the how-to speech, it was like how to tackle somebody, how to throw somebody to the ground. And they would ask for volunteers. And it's like, no. no not in this class. No. Well, it's a good thing you did do that to him because he is has been interviewed yeah. recently. Yeah. Um, which Eric is very cool. Be very enemy. cool to see. Um, okay, Richard said they're like potato raviolis or empanadas, so I was right there. Okay, let us know how she's doing as she's doing the show. Oh my gosh, Tony said he woke up to 70 degrees here. It's cold. That's why I will never move Seven back there, Seven degrees. Dad. Oh well, my gosh. one of the reasons. So, so, what are we doing today and why do you have gloves on? Okay, I have gloves because I'm going to touch these kale chips in two seconds, but... Like all the other big life events that have happened while we're doing our show, Super Bowl is no different. There are things you can't do, and there are things that you can still do. So you can still do the food, the entertainment, you can watch the commercials, you can play games, you can do pools, you can visit with uh, friends in your bubble. Things that you can't do, you can do on Zoom. You know, you can catch up with the game on Zoom with friends. So... We're going to be playing some word games and some, you know, conversation starters as we go. Our menu today are... Is. Is. Our menu today includes the following foods. There you go. What do we have? That's kale. Yes, this is kale. Now, I'm a big fan of kale, and I'm a bigger fan of potato chips. I love potato chips, but if they're out there, I'll eat them, and they're not great for me. And sometimes I'll have Travis portion out my chips, which is 12 chips, and that's tough to eat just 12 chips. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at that tiny portion like uh, I, I, I feel bad for her. So, so this is an option that you are going to do. It's, it's a little olive oil and salt on kale. A little olive oil and salt, and I okay. paid the extra money. Oh, by the way, I did grocery shopping online and had it delivered again, and it turned out great. So um, thank you, Vaughn's. So not that they not that they sponsor me unless they want to, um, but uh, I'm very loyal to Vons and and a couple other. Places. Well, they often have good prices, but they have really good food too. And what's good nice produce. about the delivery is that I'm continuing to buy just what I need, 
and we talked about that last week about what if you're living by yourself and now you have to pay anywhere from 395 to 595 to have your groceries delivered it might not be that big of a um, savings for you to you know have your food delivered so what I did is I reached out to Pilar who lives a couple cities over and she told me what she needed from the market and I put that together and mm -hmm. so uh, anyway so so those are nicely coated with oil. These We're are nicely go, coated with oil. Little... All this is, so I paid a little bit extra for the kale uh, that was already cut up and pre-washed. You can do it yourself. If you're doing it yourself, you want to strip the stems out so that, because the stems are uh, tough. So all I did is I coated this lightly with some olive oil. And we're going to put it in a low oven. Do you remember the, the degrees? Yes, I do. Look what? at you looking at me like I wasn't listening. What is it? 225. <gasps> 225 that's a slow oven because these are going to take a while to cook we're going to stick them in the oven and we're going to let them uh cook up uh over a period of like 20 minutes we're going to be checking on them it could take as long as 40 depending on how crispy you like this mm -hmm. so all this is that i use is olive oil and kosher salt if you want like an Italian, you can do like Italian seasonings, Parmesan cheese when they, you pull them oh, out of the oven. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, you can, you can customize these as much as you can. In fact, our whole menu today is about customizing some of the foods that you have so that people aren't stuck eating the same yeah. thing. So go ahead and stick that in the oven. And this beeped as soon as we started As the soon show, as we so started. preheated. So we have um, Linda, Kathy Holmes. Yeah, it's cold. What is it in Texas? Kathy, uh, Linda, Linda, and Eva. Hi, guys. Happy Sunday. Happy Super Bowl Sunday, Eva. Patricia, Rose, Hollo, Travis, and Debbie. Dot com shopping from Vons is great. It really yeah. is. And Rhea says she gets them frozen with a little smiley face. No judgment here. <laughs> oh, no judgment yeah, no, here. This show has always been about easy. Yeah. So easy cooking yeah. um, for delicious meals. And sometimes that means frozen out right. of a bag and one of my sauce. one of my favorite chefs on the Food Network was Sandra Lee, and she used to do like half prepared, and then she would finish the rest. And she got so much flack, and they took her show off the air. But I thought that's how most people cook, you know. Hmm. If you can buy something already almost done and throw it together, why not? There's no shame here. Um, a lot of stores do pick up for free. Yes, they do, Richard. You just park and pop your trunk, and you don't even have to get out of your car. Yes, that's true. In fact, when um, the first time we did it, I popped my trunk right here at home so he didn't have to walk a lot in the rain. Just put it there. Yeah. Thaddeus Novak, I am so glad you're here. <laughs> I haven't I'm seen so you in a long time, yeah, Thaddeus. Yeah, I'm so glad you're here. You're going to smile today watching this show. We got so you. So we are making kale chips. You haven't missed a lot. We've, we're... I, I, I'm almost stealing Kristen's Don't thing. Don't you I have steal to stop Kristen's that. thing. I have to stop that. Kristen Key has a show, and she's, every time someone comes in, you haven't missed much, you got to check Kristen Key out. Please so check we, her out. We also, were making kale chips and... And uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and I'll have you... Um, the first question we want to throw out there for everybody to kind of uh, have fun and play around with and answer is, uh, obviously, this Super Bowl Sunday is different for you um this year but why don't you chime in and tell us some of the things that you have done something memorable super bowl party style i from this year or from any in for, year? well this year is going to be different yeah and we haven't had it yet right so um for me it was i went to linda and mike's house in uh they lived in illinois at the yep. time and the women were all upstairs watching the TV and we were playing a game called left, right, center. And all the men were downstairs watching the football game. And it was so funny because we would hear them yelling and screaming during the football game. The, the sound would rise and then silence during the commercials. And you would hear us laughing and talking because we were watching the commercials and not paying attention to the Super Bowl. So anyway, how about you? Uh, favorite um, memory about Super Bowl? Well, I'm not a football fan, like I said. I think my most favorite memory is, um, I don't know if it's a favorite memory, it's the one I remember most though. We were trying to get Debbie to the hospital. Oh my gosh, that's right! <laughs> and, How could I forget? And Debbie's father... Why were we going to the hospital? Kept, well, because Pilar was trying to come meet me. <laughs> And uh, and I was so excited to get to the hospital, but 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 
Debbie's father kept saying, well, wait, wait, hang on, just wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know, well, he wasn't even coming with us. I don't know why we had to wait. He said, I was, I was getting labor pains on the first half of the game, and he said, wait till halftime. So we waited till halftime, and then he goes, wait for the third quarter. We're like, this game can last forever. Mm-hmm. So um, that, how could I forget that Super I don't Bowl know, Sunday? Debbie, I... Look at Pilar wrote, yeah, how could you forget? So... Um, because I guess I wasn't celebrating that day. And I remember I had broken a salt or a pepper shaker, but my set didn't match anymore. My mom noticed. So we're Travis is, this is it. We're going to the hospital. We're trying to get out the door. So, Her parents lived in Walnut, which is a good 45 minutes away from the hospital that we were taking Debbie to. So we were trying to get out the door. So um, then... <laughs> We Travis, we have pictures of Travis tying my shoes, and then we're almost out the door. And my mom comes out. I bought you salt and pepper yeah, shakers. Yeah, she's like, wait, wait, wait. I have, I have something for you. And we're like, oh my god, what is it? We're like, why are you stopping us from going to the birth of my daughter? Salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> oh my gosh! So we get to the, we get to the um, hospital, and people are all watching the game. The nurses are watching the game and everything. So Pilar was not born on Super Bowl Sunday, but she was coming, definitely coming. How about you guys? What do you remember about Super Bowl Sunday? Oh, Diana Eagleson's here. I think she, uh, her husband, Bill, won all the money. Oh, on left, right, center? <laughs> yeah, no, on, on pools. So how about you? What are some of your memorable Super Bowl Sundays? Um, all I'm doing is I'm filling a couple glasses here with some ice while you're throwing those comments in. And um, there you go. What I have here is I have two cups of cold water right here in a pitcher. This is a simple syrup. The simple syrup I made, I made with some uh, sugar called monk fruit. M-O-N-K-F-R-U-I-T. Monk fruit. The reason I like monk fruit is it doesn't raise my blood sugar levels and um, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So those of you that are um, struggling with either weight loss or you don't want to take a lot of sugar in or you're diabetic type 2 like me, monk fruit is a really good fruit because it's a one-to-one. -one. If you use one cup of sugar, you would use one cup of monk fruit. It doesn't have that super, super sweet taste like a Splenda or an Equal. So it's real easy to remember, one to one. So I made a simple syrup, simple syrup with one cup of uh, water, one cup of um, monk fruit. And a simple syrup, all you have to do is put it in a pan and let it come to a boil. And then that makes sure that the sugar is really, really uh, dissolved. So I'm pouring that in there. There you go. And so while you're doing that, Fabian says, I've been in two Super Bowl halftime shows. What, Fabian? 1984 and 1987. Fabian is a uh, dancer, yes. a performer, so um, this doesn't surprise me. No, it doesn't. That's <laughs> cool. That's cool, Diane. I would love to see photos or footage of that, by the way. <laughs> by the way, Super Bowl is a big thing for commercials. We have a commercial for you. I'm going to show you a commercial. We're going to show bit. you a commercial in a little bit. Um, can you read what Diana said? Diana says, we enjoy Super Bowl with our lovely neighbors. We did win loads of money. Love Food Fest with the Casas. Really missing that this year. Us too. Yeah. Us too. So the, we, we talk a lot about that on the show where we get together with all of our neighbors. Um, I wouldn't say all of them, but you know there are at least six or seven households at minimum and sometimes more and that means you know anywhere from 14 to 22 people and um and so yeah we we have potlucks and stuff and it's really fun we we really miss that a lot too we do we do um i'm just giving that a quick look right there i'm gonna make something for us to enjoy pilar has been uh under the weather she is uh recovering now but she has been under the weather which is why we can do a point with Pilar. She's staying safely at her house and we are safely here. Mm -hmm. And that's been going on for about six weeks. So we're going to make this drink in her honor. Look at Linda's favorite memory. She won $10,000 on a square. On a square? You know when you bet on the little squares? I have no clue. We've done it at parties. Okay. Okay. You're the one that always does that. Yeah. I'm just the one standing in the back watching as you... 
One of my friends worked on the Katy Perry. I never win, so I never <laughs> touch the money. Linda, how much did you have to pay for a, that square? I'm curious if it was just a buck. $10,000. Richard said one of my friends worked on the Katy Perry Super Bowl halftime show as an artist. That's cool. Very cool. So I've got my two cups of water. I've got my one cup of water with one cup of monk fruit. What I'm adding in here is a good English tea. My friend David brought me a big box of tea from England, so I'm putting that in there. So, what am I making, you might ask, Travis? Yes, what are you making? I am making an Arnold Palmer. This is one of my favorite drinks. Arnold Palmer was a golfer, to keep in line with the sports theme. Arnold Palmer was a golfer, and he asked if they would make him a half lemonade, half iced tea. And this woman overheard it and went, that sounds good. She goes, I'll have a Palmer. So it became, the myth is that it became uh, an Arnold Palmer. So all it is is iced tea and lemonade. Mm. So I brewed up the lemonade from my friend David. Um, uh, Pitcher. Pitcher. From England. From England, who brought me this tea from England. So it's a good black tea. I brewed it earlier. You can brew in the microwave. You can brew, you know, with hot water. Can you brew it in the sun? Yeah, I don't see why not. Well, I remember last night. Okay, so the reason I asked that is because we were hesitant to, and we told David what we were, what we did with some of oh, his well, tea. Oh, well, English are so weird with yeah. their tea. Yeah. English, I mean, if he knew I was doing this iced, he'd have a cow. Well, so, he said, oh, that's okay, mate. Just, you know, how are you going to do it? He didn't say it that. That's my Australian accent. I don't you, know why I said it that way. Can you check our kale chips? Your kale chips. They don't look crispy yet. No, but you can give them a little mixy mix. Okay. Um, we're going to get to our beef dip sandwiches, I promise you. We're not going to keep you... You never announced you know. that's what they were, babe. I'm sorry. On the menu, kale uh, chips and a veggie chip, an actual veggie chip you can buy at the store, drippy roast beef sandwiches, caramelized onions, and Arnold Palmers. So we've got the kale chips going. We've got the beef sitting there. Beef should be any meat, including fish, should be at room temperature before you cook. Um, I recently found out about the fish. Um, I'm a little on the fence about that, but I feel very comfortable having my beef, my pork, my chicken sit out until it gets to room temperature. You never, ever, ever, ever want to defrost on the counter. Don't listen to your parents when they say, well, we did it and you didn't die. Obviously, some people did. Um, did they? When I, I started sick. dating Richard, my dad gave me a terrible towel that he had. Apparently, his great aunt had thrown a Super Bowl party at my dad's house when the Steelers were playing the Rams in L.A. That's a long time That's ago. That's a long time ago. <laughs> when the Rams were in L.A. Even I know. And told ago. no one it was a Steelers party until she started decorating. Wow. That's funny. Um, Linda, right. Linda bet 500 to win that 10000 Still. Jeez. Yeah. All right. There's a whole Arnold Palmer Museum here. The golfer, not the drink. <laughs> <laughs> so what I have here, um, I don't know if Debbie Wheatley Ferguson came on yet, but I had friends deliver me these beautiful lemons that are very sweet. Um, my friend Yolanda dropped some off. Debbie Wheatley Ferguson sent us some in the mail. Little beautiful organic lemons. And when we went to visit Pilar the other day for some social distance, um, just food drop off, she um, has a lemon tree in her backyard, so we picked a couple of those. So the, there's some, hi Paula, there's some lemon, uh, this lemon juice is made with those lemons from friends grown with love. So you're sifting to make sure the seeds... Yeah, okay. I have one cup of some lemon, freshly squeezed lemon juice there. Now my friends like Yolanda brought me a huge basket of lemons and she has even more. And you know what you can do with those lemons? You can juice them and you can freeze the juice. You can mm. freeze it in an ice cube tray, you can freeze it in baggies. Um, some people say you can freeze a whole lemon. Hmm. I don't know why not, if you can freeze all the rest. I didn't realize that was so pulpy. There's a lot in there yeah. that you're catching with that. Yeah, so we're getting that. Yeah. There you go. Now, I'm a fan of Arnold Palmer's. Travis is more of a fan of iced tea and lemonade, uh, lemonade separately. So, we're doing that. Am I going to fire up this grill at any time here? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to get you there. Okay. Let me get you a drink so you can do it. Go ahead and start melting yeah. while I get your drink here. So I've just got two tablespoons of olive oil. And two tablespoons, no, two tablespoons of canola, canola oil. oil. And two teaspoons, 
two tablespoons of butter. Yeah. You want to use oil and butter so that you get a nice sear to that. So we're just putting that chuck roast into the uh, pot once that's... Uh, once it melts. Once it melts. Yeah. So here you go, Trav. Here's your Arnold Palmer. It's a beautiful color. Now, you might want to adjust, like any kind of iced tea that comes to your table at a restaurant, you might say, hmm, I want a little more sugar in there. So because this is black tea, it's caffeinated? Yes, this Good. is caffeinated. Because I need a little bit more caffeine. That's fresh lemon. You like it? You know, I don't remember where we were, but we went somewhere and they made their lemonade with fresh lemons. And you can tell the difference between like a canned lemonade and real lemonade. That's really good. That's like, it's very lemony, but the tea really cuts it nicely. I really like this. Yeah. Do you like it mm. as a tea fan and a separate lemonade? I fan? like that. Yeah. Good. I don't think it needs any sugar anymore. That is a good amount. And that's a monk fruit. And you can buy it at Trader Joe's, you can buy it at Sprouts, you can order online at Amazon. And for those of you, again, watching your sugar, you can bake with it, you can make drinks with it, you can sprinkle it in your all over your cereal, coffee, and it doesn't raise your blood sugar, and it acts like regular sugar. There is a white and there is a uh, brown sugar. Um, so anyways, oh look at what, my friends are being so nice to each other, look at that. Look, we have uh, Paula, Linda, and Kathy, Paula, Linda, Paula, Linda, and Suzanne all talking to each other. Yeah. Thaddeus, you're still with us. Good. Thaddeus so says, glad. this sounds refreshing. Thaddeus, I don't know where you're at. I think New Jersey, if I'm not mistaken. Um, my dad is in seven degree weather in outside of St. Louis. It's probably 75, 76 degrees outside. So this is very refreshing here. Not to rub your face in it, Dad. Thaddeus. But we do have a guest room. I keep telling you, if you hop Come. on the plane. Yeah. Um, Thaddeus, let me know what you make with your stevia. Because I have a big bag of stevia, and I didn't have a good experience with it. So can you tell me if you have a recipe or something that you like to use it for and how to use it? You can DM me, or you can drop it right there in the comments. Okay. So Travis has his... Um, you have that ready to go? Yeah. Okay. What am I going to do You're going to salt and pepper your chuck roast. I bought a really pretty Chuck Roast Vons online, and you can, um, you, when you shop online, you can find out how much per Maybe pound. Over here. Okay. Why not? Let's do it here so that the people can see. Okay. You want to show them on that, the, that sure. nice piece of meat you got there? Hang on. And we're going to go boom. Now, because I'm doing the meat, this. Do you have tongs so I can flip this? Yes. We're going to be focusing on some safety um, things in, about the kitchen because the kitchen is where most accidents happen. And um, one of them is cross-contamination can cause food poisoning. So because Travis brought this meat over, I'm going to get rid of this cutting board. Why? Well, it's on a platter. Still, you just don't want to take a chance. Do you want to take a chance? I don't mind. <laughs> Come on. It's on a platter. Don't look at me like that. So, salt and pepper. Liberally. Liberally. Yes. He's going to take that and he's going to sear it. Loretta, when you sear something, it just means that the outside is going to cook um, hard and fast and have kind of a, a crust to it. So, oh, look at that. Eva said she'll be making Arnold Palmer's today for my four-person gathering. Very cool. Very cool. You want to... Be on TV. Is that Amy or Carlos? Good to Hi see you guys. guys here. Happy Hi. Sunday. Hi, happy Sunday. So, um, Trav, I'm going to move this. You can move it for me. I will move it for you. Okay. Again, I know that he's making fun, but I just want to make sure. In fact, when we polled some people about our show, they commented that it's always clean and we're always safe and you see us washing our hands or using gloves. That's important. Uh, Emergency rooms are really, really, you know, they're full right now. So please be careful. And cross-contamination is a huge thing. Um, Thaddeus says, I use it in everything, but the trick is very little because it's super strong. Right. Right. I had uh, a little raw honey to enhance the flavor, but Stevia has a strong, yeah, it has a really strong flavor and you have to experiment. With portions. Oh, so the liquid is easier. Thank you for letting me know. Pilar talks okay. about using a little bit of honey with her sweetener sometimes too. And um, I'm a big fan of, of honey, so that actually sounds really good in this. Story. All right. So we got our olive palmers. You want to check on our kale? Sure. Okay. 
And you're searing that meat? Yep, it's just on one side now. Okay. Now, the reason we're cooking at 225 is because, remember, low and slow. I'm sorry, how was that? Low and slow. Okay, if you All say right. so. There you go. And those go back in. So it takes a little babysitting, but you know, for Super Bowl, everybody's in the same room, so it's not like, you know, you're staying in the kitchen, and it's something easy you can ask people to make. Hey, can you put together my Arnold Palmer's? Can you check on the kale? Can, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so, you ready for your next Super Bowl question? All right. Who is your favorite halftime Super Bowl entertainment? Um... I think I can go first. I think Gaga. I think Gaga had a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Well, I I never watch uh, Super Bowl, but I do remember that when Lady Gaga jumped off of the top, right? That was her. Oh my gosh! Super Bowl. Yeah, man. yeah. I saw that the other day, and I thought she's fearless. She's absolutely fearless, and so I have to say. Of every halftime show I've seen, I actually saw some snippets of halftime shows though too. But yeah. um, Prince, what about yeah, Prince? Prince was amazing. Yep, and uh, <laughs> Fabian says me. <laughs> yes, Fabian, of course. <laughs> well, you know what, Fabian, you're gonna have to share the uh, the footage of that, and then that will become our favorite as well. Peggy Castaneda, hello, Peggy. We haven't seen you in. Hi, Glad Peggy. You're here today. You, you too, too, and no, no doubt. doubt. That was says. a good one. Yeah. Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. Yes, Michael. I forgot Michael Jackson. I'm getting this out because Pilar said a little rosemary in an Arnold Palmer is really good. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, I want to back up. It's Amy from Beyond TV. Hi, Happy Amy. Welcome. Super Bowl Sunday. Good to see you. Okay, so Eva says Michael Jackson. Paula Gelman says I love Gaga. If you haven't seen her dive off of the top of the um, uh, stadium, then you you would love her more when you do. Oh, Whitney Houston from the Na Whitney National Whitney Houston, Anthem. yeah. Madonna when she did the Egyptian theme. Do I remember that? What did she sing? She's great with anything. National Anthem, Whitney Houston. J-Lo and her daughter's performance. That was last year. Did you perform with Shakira? I think she did. Beyonce was good, too. Man, they've had some really good um, acts. How's your roast beef? Did you flip it over? I flipped it over once. Okay, so um, he's searing that roast beef. We're not going to keep you forever. In fact, we made this yesterday so that we wouldn't. That, by the way, it's yummy with the rosemary. Is it? Yeah. You want to give it a try? All right. Hang on. Let's do this. Travis, <laughs> Travis, Travis. You, it does smell I, rosemary. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not bad. Mm -hmm. That's not overpowering at all. No, because rosemary, you got to be really careful. Yeah, I don't know why I felt yeah. like that was going to be like a, right. an Italian drink or something. <laughs> Thank you, Pilar, for that tip. We did it right here. Mm. Bruno Mars. Remember Bruno mm. Mars? Yes, Bruno Mars is amazing. Yeah. Uh, seriously, Madonna or Gaga, they've always had some really good Super Bowl um, halftime shows. That is so cool. Um, so Travis has that seared. Loretta, I hope you're still with us. What he's going to add, everything's over there. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Okay. Doesn't that look amazing? It smells so good in here right now. And um, so I'm, I got a double camera so you guys can see. Now what are the steps? Now we're going to put in two cups of beef broth. Okay. There you go. By the way, I used a carton of beef broth, which happens to have four cups. If you want to double this recipe, it's a good one to double because you can... What we're going to do with this one that we're going to make, because we made one yesterday, we're going to put it in the freezer. We're going to shred it and put it in the freezer. Okay. Then, uh, so you have your beef broth. Now, one cup of water. Okay, we've got one cup of agua. Two tablespoons of rosemary. A little rosemary goes a long way. So with any strong spice or herb like that, you want to put in less than you might think you need because you can always add more. And this is Travis's favorite part. So, yeah, so I'm going to show you guys on this uh, camera right here what we're putting in there. These are Greek pepperoncinis. And this is a 12-ounce jar. So we're going to put this whole thing in there, babe? And the juice. 
And the juice. And we chose, you can choose uh, pepperoncinis that are already sliced up. We chose the full ones because when you make these yummy, drippy, fabulous sandwiches, you can use the whole pepperoncini. I'm not a fan. He is. Um, okay. So, there you go. How does that look? We're going to go up. It looks, it looks different, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that doesn't look like a dish that might end up tasting as wonderful <laughs> now, as yes, it did. Yesterday, we had errands to, to run, and what we did is we put this exact same recipe in a crock pot and let it cook all day. So if it's on the stove like it will be, you want, that's going to cook for about four hours. You want to turn down the heat a little bit, and that's going to cook for about four hours. And when it's done, we're going to shred it. And we, like I said, we've already done it once, so we're going to taste it in just a mm -hmm. little bit here. Um, let's see. You want to check the kale chips again? Why not? Why not? Why not? Bruce Springsteen. Do you remember that? Bruce Springsteen? The halftime show with Bruce Springsteen? How does this look, babe? I don't know what no, you're going for. You're here. looking for... You want to show here? Yeah, yeah let's, okay. let's show there. So we're looking for... This is still wet. We're looking for a chip, like a, a, a chip. So I think we can put those in there for about 10 minutes and just forget them. Yeah, okay. Okay? But make sure that everybody has their own playground. Okay. All right. So let me spread them yeah. out a little bit. Spread All right. Out. Ready for another Super Bowl? Oh, we got new messages. Okay. Patricia said, wow, great idea, which I'm not sure she's... Oh, the maybe the crock pot. All right. Um, uh, good. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So... We want to ask what your favorite commercial is from the Super Bowl. They've had some really funny ones. They've had some impactful, you know, for your heart ones. They've had ones that bring you to tears. Mm -hmm. um, so what was your favorite Super Bowl commercial? And on that note, we have a commercial I did years ago. It wasn't... Um, it wasn't on the Super Bowl, but it did air right before the very end of uh, American Idol. Right before they announced the winner between Clay Aiken and Ruben Stoddard. Because we had waited the whole show. Like, yeah. when is it coming on? When is it coming on? And then I just thought, it's not going to come on. Yeah. And it came on we, right we before. We thought that it was going to get bumped. Yeah. But this commercial right here that we're going to show you is Debbie's commercial from just... That's me. Yep, right here. Let's go. Let's and go. now my dream car's here. I got a deal of this, I'm certain. Type in your choice, then hit return. You want selection, they're not hurting. Cars and trucks and cycles too. At the same place as this dress shoe. If it exists, it can be found. You can even buy a town and do it. Even. <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? Did you guys know that she could jump that high? I didn't know until that day that she could jump that high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the jump. The person who jumped was Nancy Thurston. And she and her husband, I'm going to invite them. We're just trying to find a right time slot for them because they live, uh, you know, in the Midwest. But they, um, she was the stunt woman. Those of you that are Charmed fans, she stunted for Piper for years she um, was also on Heroes. There's a lot of things that Nancy's been in, but she can't really show her face. So, um, uh, oh, Thaddeus said, okay, we'll get right back to that. Oh, my God. Okay. They're, they're, they're commenting about the commercial. Okay. Right so, let's take Thaddeus's first. Don't forget <laughs> Diana Ross's performance when she was taken away in a helicopter. Yeah, those those performers are nuts. Yeah, I don't know why. And they get the audience involved to do things. Okay, yeah. so yeah, that was my commercial. Um, uh, They're loving it. Everyone's loving it. Yeah. I loved it. I was actually on set that day, um, and it happened to be one of the funnest sets. Fun fact about that: Mickey Rooney's son, Michael Rooney, choreographed all those dancers yeah. and all the scenes. And he was actually in the scene when the box truck door goes up. He's standing there with Debbie and, and the other yeah. guy. That was so Michael Nan Rooney. Nancy Thurston was my stunt woman, my stunt person. And so she, um, I mean, down to the ring on my finger. They took my ring off and put it on her. And uh, she's the one that jumped off a little. First of all, they want to hang me from a crane. And uh, Nancy and Travis are like, nope, that's not happening. Because I had never done a... a 
um, commercial, I went into audition and I did the big arms like I like to do, and I knocked over the set and the director, and I just kept singing. So I figured. The, I, he was an enormous Israeli dude named Gnome, <laughs> and and everyone was terrified of him. And I remember be, Debbie calling me saying, "How do you sing uh, my way? How do you sing my way?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about? Just sing it to me." Yeah. And so so she's in there, and then she comes out, and she's like, "Oh my God, he was big and scary." And I and I knocked over the set, and she was terrified. She wasn't. I'm like, I didn't get it. I had never auditioned for a commercial in my life. I had no idea. All my friends go, "You just do this." Honored Arnold Palmer. Mm. And <laughs> it took four days to shoot. They cleared a freeway. Um, they wanted to hang me from a train. It's like, no. A, and a crane. A crane. And then that scene where they're throwing the doll at me to catch, I kept crying. So I had to do, because I was on a freeway, on a truck, and six dancers were lifting me. Oh, you me. guys don't understand. So we are, and I was on set there too, we are on one of those overpasses that's a good hundred feet high and then they had her in the truck and they were lifting her and so even from the truck if you looked either way you're looking straight down like like from the edge of a cliff so it must have been terrifying too. because the cars underneath were still going yeah. so when they lifted and dancers they're just really sure of their movements i'm not you know i'm not used to being carried around and so they just did a strong lift and a stop and i would just start to cry and so the director came up to me and goes you cannot cry you have to not cry and catch this bear maybe we'll run it again at the end so people can realize what we're talking yeah, about yeah. and then the box truck he's talking about they closed the box truck and then and i was in there and the director called for lunch and nobody thought to let me out. I don't think I was there that day. No, so I'm knocking on the door, like, and this is before cell phones and stuff. So I'm knocking on the door like, um, um, Nancy was the one that realized she's gone. Where is she? Nobody has seen her since the box truck thing. And then they opened it up and then the guy that opened it, he goes, what an air hog. <laughs> So, oh my god! And in that box truck scene is the is Michael Rooney with me, yeah. um, but they forgot me in the box truck, and then um, they wanted me to get on the back of a motorcycle, and Nancy said no. So Nancy was my advocate for that commercial because I had mm -hmm. no idea. You're supposed to call your agent and say they want me to swing from a chandelier. And for those so. of you that know how how graceful I am on skates, roller skates, Debbie isn't. I had never skated in my life, and he goes, and they go, you know, typical actress. Can you skate? Sure. So, I, he came on his lunch break to teach me how to skate. So he taught me how to skate, but nobody taught me how to stop. And by teach, all I did was say, "Don't fall," <laughs> and just keep your legs straight, bend your knees. You know, you don't want to be rigid because then you're going to fall. That's about the extent of it. We didn't have that much time. Maybe ten minutes, fifteen minutes tops. So they push her, but like I said, this is on an, an on ramp, so she's going downhill. And there was no one down there to catch her, so I had to run and stop her from going. But down. I saw him on the side, my side eye, and I'm singing. I'm just singing. And why um, did they let me on that set? There's I don't, no reason because nobody to be there. was going to stop me except you. Like yeah. stop. So um, we'll show that commercial again. But um, you guys, I don't mean to be a, a camera hog. You tell me what was your favorite commercial? So Richard says I was about to say the Overstock.com ad where they unleash a pack of ravenous wolves. On a high school marching what? band. What? <laughs> what? Just to make sure we really remember them. But now it's eBay. Um, wait, it's what eBay. were they advertising? Overstock.com. But why would they do that? How would you... I don't get how the two work together. I don't know. But why Why anything? Why did they put you jumping onto a flatbed truck with know. an eBay sign coming down? And the one ad I never understood that everybody was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I felt like Emperor with no clothes watching that one was the one where it was an Apple commercial and the runner comes in. Oh, the in. sledgehammer? Yeah. yeah. It I was just groundbreaking. That. It was filmed. It was because it was a director. Um, they took a, a chance with it and it was also connected with the movie. I'm, I'm forgetting my Apple lore at the moment, but... Um, but yeah, I, it was a, a different type of commercial and they were running a risk doing that one. Interesting. Scott says, I've never seen that commercial. I watch it over and over. <laughs> the, the one with the wolves, now I want to see that commercial yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so what do you have in front of you? Okay. 
This is a story. I would wake this man up in the middle of the night going, Travis, I want to make caramelized onions. Travis, I'm thinking of Loretta. And if she learns how to make caramelized onions, she can extend her menu so much with caramelized onions. This is is like gold oh this is like gold this is my jar of caramelized onions and it took about an hour of our day and i say r because this poor guy had to breathe in onions all day i was coughing um, all night that's <laughs> where the comment was earlier from coughing this had me it's yeah. a strong strong um smell in your house but the nice thing is once you make this this is like four onions once you make this a little goes a long way. We're going to have this later um, on top of crostinis with goat cheese. Mm. You can put this on top of, um, uh, you can put this, of course, we're going to do it on top of our sandwiches, but you can do it for tacos, tostadas. So let me, uh, the Dorito commercials are always good. They are. Um, uh, so we're going to talk about caramelized onions. Why don't we show the photos of sure, the process? Sure, let's do this. So can I talk over them? You, you sure okay, can. Okay, so here's the onions. You want just the humble yellow onion. You don't need a Vidalia. You don't need the sweet ones. You don't need the Spanish. It's just the yellow onion. And onions are pretty cheap. Now, I bought them online, so they're about a dollar a piece. Otherwise, you could get them probably for about... 70 cents an onion. Mm -hmm. So we got our onions yep. and you cut them up in. Um, oh, sorry, I went yeah. to the other. You're going to cut them up in slices. So you're going to cut them in half. You cut the two ends off, then you cut it right down the core, and then you just uh, slice your onions. Okay. So once you do all that, then you get your onions into a big bowl and you put in a teaspoon of kosher salt and a uh, half a cup is that a half a cup half of a oil? cup of extra virgin olive oil right so yep. you get um you get the half a cup of olive oil and you put it in a pan then you put your onions in your sliced onions and then you sprinkle the salt on top so here's mm -hmm. what it looks like right at the beginning yeah and this is after about three to five minutes of cooking you want to leave them undisturbed because you want to get start to get them cooked at the bottom they start to caramelize so that was like and three then, to five and then minutes. You fold them. You're starting to fold. You them. You fold them. As you don't stir them. You fold them. You fold them. You fold them. And then what do you do? Uh. You fold them. <laughs> and so this is about this is about twenty minutes. Yeah, probably yeah. about twenty minutes in. Yeah. And like I said, I was setting a timer, so every eight minutes I would go and I would fold the onions in. Mm -hmm. So. And then about. That's maybe about 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And then this last one is at 40 minutes. Yes, and look at that. Look, mm. they're so they're they're just so sweet and beautiful. Yeah, at that point they do you can actually call it a jam and we were watching a chef on a on a show yesterday um, call calling it onion jam because they do get very sweet. And it's just so it's such a great um, just such a great thing to have in your fridge to pull out. So we got our kale chips. You can check on those. I think it's time to reheat the sandwich meat we made yesterday. And I'll go ahead and get you a... How am I doing this? In the oven or in the microwave? Microwave. Okay. All, All right. right. Sorry, I'm showing everybody my back, but I have my name on it. Gutierrez. That's my stage name. Um, <laughs> That's your real name. Okay. I dropped the... Yeah, well, what do you think? A little more. A little more. We're gonna show the we're gonna show the people when we're ready. So anyways, these caramelized onions can stay in your fridge for five days or so. So we went to Sprouts yesterday and we were looking for the perfect bread. And what do you need me to move? You're gonna show the people? Yeah. On the camera? Yeah. Just hold it up to the camera, okay. baby. So what Travis found was a bag of buns, and they were uh, different kinds of buns. They're 12 different little dinner rolls. And I was looking for a big dinner roll, and he goes, no, let's go with the little ones. And the cool yeah. thing is, they're all different. There's a pretzel bun, there's a sourdough, sourdough French, bread. French bread. So it's kind of cool that everybody can have their own little kind of sandwich. So, Travis, what do you want yours on? I liked the pretzel. We had some of these last night with dinner. Uh, Just Debbie the roll. Made some, yeah. Debbie made some, some chicken, and so just threw a little bit of butter on the pretzel roll, and oh my God, it's so good. We You can butter and toast these if you want. I asked Travis, and he said he didn't want no. them buttered or toasted. I think I'm going to try this cute little sourdough. And you know what? 
bread really makes the sandwich. So if you've got a good slice of meat or if you've got some, like we've got this delicious drippy dip sandwich, put it on good bread. Do yourself a, good, a favor. Yeah. And if you're like, I don't want to invest in that many rolls. It's just my husband and I, or it's just me. Don't worry about it. I have got all different kinds of ways you can use your bread up. We can make croutons. We can make breadcrumbs. There's all kinds of things that you can do. All right. Um, I'm just oh, this up. let's see. Um, the Apple ad was in 1984. Was it that long? And it was based on the book, 1984. Richard Connemacher, you should be on a game show. You know everything. Um, in a good way. You know everything. I always go, Richard will know. Uh, Paula Gelman says she adds ghee, which also makes them yummy. Oh my gosh, ghee is the most beautiful. What is ghee? It's a butter. Is oh. it Japanese? I want to say it's either a Japanese technique. That was really good. Remember, I'm a home cook. I'm learning right along with you guys. Um, so are you heating up our onions yet? No. Okay. Give me that. Yep. Is the meat still? I, yeah, I, put, I, I um, stirred up the meat. Okay, I'm going to need food. a couple plates. I'm doing a little sourdough bun because I don't get to eat sourdough a lot, and this is just the perfect size for me. So, there we go. He wants to the bun. Again, you can toast these buns if you like your toasted buns. If you like your buns toasty. Yes, um, and the onions are here. Okay. Yummy. Um, you can take this beef after it's cooked for four hours. You can take it and you can serve it hot. It's, remember, it's cooked with that pepperoncini um, juice in the in the jar, and we chose full pepperoncini, so you can put a pepperoncini right there on the plate. That way, if somebody doesn't want a pepperoncini, they don't have to have people. one. Sure. Oh my gosh! It smells amazing. Yeah, right? the variety of bread is nice. Never seen those. Love caramelized onions. No people hate onions and love them exactly. Travis would not um, is not a big onion fan. Okay. Oh my God, that means. Yeah was seasoned amazingly first but the pepperoncinis trust me on this you guys if you if you like pepperoncinis you're gonna love this um, because you definitely get that sense of pepperoncini but you also get those other flavors in there too that rosemary and, and you're you're doing the onions right now I am okay yeah. so and then I am NOT a fan of pepperoncini whole but I do like the juice so I'm just gonna take some with the juice and then we'll throw the onions yeah. on. And the size of your roast, I don't know if I told you, it's like a three pound roast. Did you say a nasty word? Are you okay? Yeah. Are you all right? Potholders. I'm just saying. What did you call me? Potholders. He burned himself behind me, right? Okay. Okay. Now let me show the people this because yeah. this is crazy good. You guys, look at those caramelized onions. Aren't they beautiful? Oh, they smell so good. You can put these on top of a. Um, you can mm. put these on top of a pizza. You can put them on top of a sandwich, like we're doing now. Um, put some on yours. Yeah. You can okay. use this meat on top of a tostada or a taco. So we're gonna do this now. So now. Let oh, me our show. chips. Your chips. You guys, look at this, and doesn't that just look so delicious? Now this could be maybe a little bit juicier because yeah. you got the you got the thicker pretzel bun, which is kind of more the cons consistency of a bagel. So I'm just going to put a little bit more of the juice, juice and I'm going to put it on the top part of the bun too. Okay. Now, I don't care for kale chips, but for a healthier option for myself, we actually went and got some of these yummy things. These are veggie straws, so spinach, tomato, potato, and these are going to be my healthier chip option. And I've got the kale chips. Yep. So what healthier. do we do? We lightened this up a little bit in that we're using a chuck roast. We're not doing a hamburger like we said we were going to grill a hamburger because um, we weren't sure what the weather was going to be like so that's lightened up the sandwich buns are tiny so it's like a slider size so um you provide other food so you're not eating a big old sandwich um and we lightened up our arnold palmers with some monk fruit and we're doing these chips which are nice here baby thank you 
And we'll give it a try now. Mm, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I've been oh, ready. Oh, and I took my ch my chips out. Sandwich first? Sure. Who cares? Mmm. Oh, I love the onion! Mmm. Oh, my God. All of those flavors are dancing together right now. Mm -hmm. Like that They're happy so dance. so good. That's all those flavors are doing in my mouth. You definitely get the sweet caramelized onion, mm -hmm. the pepperoncini, that beef, mm -hmm. the juice, the pretzel mm. bun for me does it. I love pretzel buns. Mm. I love the sweet and the pepperoncini. Right? Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Mm. That's really good. My sister's on here. She said yummy. And I told her, because I'm a jerk, not a jerk, I'm a dork. And I said, I'm making caramelized onion. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, I'm going to bring you some because they turned out okay. And she's oh, great. She's like, okay. So I don't think she had a, a vision of everything you could do with some caramelized onion. Well, to, what can you do with caramelized onion? You can put it on top of a pizza, tostadas. Um, you want to bring me those crostinis? Crostinis, these um, little things. We've made these before, mm -hmm. but with uh, fig jam, mm -hmm. right? We made it with fig jam. You pick these up. We're going to toast them, and we're going to put a little goat cheese, and then we're going to top them off with some of the onions. onions. So good. Very Yummy. sweet. Mm -hmm. Now, now the meat from yesterday was ten ninety seven just for the meat. This meat in here was under $10. So that big piece of meat will eventually be shredded into what, what looks like this mm -hmm. here that I showed you. No, there's more in the fridge. Well, I'm just saying what oh. looks like this. So it's shredded up. Yeah. You put it on sandwich rolls. Um, this is one of the more favorite sandwich meats that we've done. Yeah, I really like it. And the nice thing about shopping online is if you ask for a three-pound roast, they're going to get you a three-pound roast. So if you're cooking according to a recipe, um, online shopping is the way to go. You need six carrots, they'll give you six carrots. Mm -hmm. So this is so good. I'm going to try my chips. I'm try not going to ask you because... Um, you're not a fan of... We already of... know I don't like them. I love kale chips. I love kale chips. They are crispy. And you can taste that kosher salt. You can use sea salt if you want. Parmesan cheese. There's all different kinds of ways you can go. And the beauty of this is there's really no calories other than the, um, the oil. So what is it about? Like the, it, it gives you the crunch... Because there's something about the texture when you're eating, when you're eating chips with a sandwich, especially a sandwich like this. Mm -hmm. Are you are you getting that with the kale? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're getting the crisp. You you feel like you're part of the gang. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's hard when you have a special diet, or you can't eat what everybody else is. It's nice to have something on the table that you can go. That's a fun. That's fine. Yeah, and every now and then splurge on the other. Just make sure you count your points. I went for a donut finally this week. I've been waiting for three weeks. <laughs> so, um, we have a couple more questions for you. Oh, that's good. If you could perform with one of the musical acts from the Super Bowl, for the Super Bowl, who would you perform with and why? Probably first one is Fabian. Tell us who were you performing with? Yeah. <laughs> and why were you performing with those people? I usually don't eat during the show. It's really good, though. It's really good. And so are these uh, veggie straws. Mm hmm. Mm, let me try one. Sure. Who would you perform with? Who would you perform with? Oh, my God. Um, alive or dead? Yeah. Why not? It's a question. It's fantasy. Want some more tea? Yeah, I'll take some more of that while I think about my answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Fabian, who did you perform mm -hmm. with? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I would I would be on the harmonica and backup vocals, of course, because he's got amazing vocals and his guitar skills are stupid. They're, they're amazing. Um, and I would just play just enough harmonica that you would go, hey, there's a harmonica player up there. And then I would stop so that the focus could be on Stevie Ray Vaughan's Amazing guitar playing. So that's who mine would be, Stevie Ray Vaughan. What about you? The mighty elements of the universe. You said what? The mighty elements of the universe. And what part would you play? Earth, wind, and fire. Would you be I on would the just, tambourine No, I'd just be a dancer She'd in the back. She'd be with the little shakers or some castanets. Yeah. Do you remember 
<laughs> do, 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 do. Richard, now that we said the donut, you're going to want a donut. Richard said the who? Mickey mm -hmm. Rooney. Oh, you performed with Mickey Rooney. Oh, how weird. What a weird thing that we have Mickey Rooney's son on that commercial. Yeah. Anybody else? Who would you perform with? Let's say you could sing, you know? You don't have to go, oh, I'd look like yeah, an so idiot. Yeah, so if you can't sing, maybe we're, maybe the fantasy is that you can sing. Uh-huh. Okay. Who would it be? You just looked up and saw the uh, the ad for the Super Bowl. We have the TV yeah. on behind us. So um, we're going to recap this really quick. We've got our roast beef in there cooking. And it's cooking with um, two cups of broth, one cup of water, some fresh rosemary. You can always use dried. And um, we seared the meat first in some canola oil. And then we covered it with that liquid. One jar of pepperoncini. I'm not a fan of pepperoncini, but I did like it. I did. Mm -hmm. Morris Day in the Time so I can dance my ass off. I love like your this. sister. <laughs> like this. Dude. Bring me a mirror. Bring oh, me a mirror. Shit. Bring me a mirror. Holy shit, look at her go, you remember? guys. Remember? You hold up a mirror? I don't remember, but I like what I'm seeing here. Dude. You guys, I wish you could see what's happening with the feet right now. No, wait, and then you gotta do. Like, here, show me in a knife. Like, what are we doing? Show me in my, my face. Oh, okay. Here. I have no clue what she's doing. Oh my gosh! What? What? Right? Okay. <laughs> what? What? But now my shows would be sponsored by AARP. <laughs> she's going to be winded after that one. <laughs> um, ours were the Disney shows, and I would have loved to do the show with Michael Jackson or Lady Gaga. Paula says, if I could sing. That's part of the fun. Yes, the mirror, Monica says. She knows what I'm talking about. Um, and our last Super Bowl question is... <sighs> Told you you were going to get winded. I know. I'm like, I have COVID. Oh, no. I'm just overweight. Um, <laughs> my last Super Bowl question, I think it was two Super Bowls ago. And like I said, Travis and I are not Super Bowl fans. Correct. I think one of us wasn't feeling well. Okay. So we skipped the party, but we wanted to be part of the fun, so we went to Outback. Okay. And we got a table in the bar. For the last, like, ten minutes of the game. Do you remember this? I do remember. And I then something amazing is. happened at the game, and we're like, we watched just that one part. And it was like this amazing outcome of the game. If any of you remember, it was Super Bowl a couple of years ago, where something happened in the last five minutes. I feel like that minutes. might have been last year. That might have been last year. Was it last year? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. So if anyone... Thanks for the laughs. <laughs> You're yeah. welcome. Um, so let's recap. Sure. I'm going to grab my sure. uke. Sure. By the way, you guys, we know that you've got a lot of options. A Especially lot of today. other places where you could be spending your time, things that you could be watching. But from our hearts to you guys, we really appreciate you stopping into our kitchen, letting us goof around, make some really crazy good meals, and for spending that time with us. We, we really, really appreciate we it. We do. This is your halftime show, maybe? <laughs> Rams versus Saints. We gotta look that one up. We had so much fun today. So we made the uh, drippy roast beef. Mmm, yummy. We found the little tiny rolls at um, Sprouts that had an assortment, but you can do a regular. We also picked up some regular sandwich rolls, because you can do that too. Um, we did the caramelized onions. Caramelized onions require nothing but onions olive oil and patience <laughs> yeah a lot of patience a lot of patience in your house is going to smell like a pasadena oh, restaurant so good it does smell good um and once you get to that caramelized phase like 15 minutes in the onion smell starts to go away you smell caramelized onion um and then uh we did the arnold palmers with monk fruit and we did the kale chips which are lovely and we also have straw chips uh veggie straw chips uh, too funny watching you dance. Is that what we're calling it, Diana? We're calling it a dance. I think I can call it a stroke. Maybe I can get her to do it again, but I'll record it. So you can see the <laughs> foot movement. People may, my age tune out of the halftime show to watch the Lawrence Welk reruns. <laughs> stop, Carol. You stop now. You stop. I love the dancing on the um, Lawrence Welk show. Um, Thanks again, guys. I enjoyed it. Are we going to close with your song or the commercial? 
We'll play the commercial right after we end this. Bye, everybody. Have a good Super Bowl Sunday. We love you. Don't forget to tune in Tuesday. Our our guest is Ken Gar, the sober husband. He is an amazing comedian and has been sober for like four years. And like all comedians, he's going to make it uh, fun to talk about his journey and what he's been doing. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Tune in on Tuesday. I'm with Carol. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye. And here's the commercial. One last time. And now my dream car's here. I got a deal of this, I'm certain. Type in your choice, then hit return. You want selection, they're not hurting. Cars and trucks and cycles, too. At the same place. As this dress shoe, if it exists, it can be found. You can even buy a town and do it here.